getting an early start on our CSA harvest this week for Yellowbird. And then we have some projects to do and also a big upgrade for the high tunnel I want to show you. We're harvesting 935 heads of Toco Gicana. It's a open head cabbage. This is a multi-seeded plant. And I use the multi-dimple oasis cube. And you can see all the different plants and stuff in there. So do you think you're gonna have any extra? Because I have stuff for lettuce wraps. I think I think this would make a good lettuce wrap. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of people from the farm market make lettuce wraps out of this, yeah. All right, sweet. So, van's locked, whoops. <laughs> okay, van's open now. Getting my boxes out from last week that we brought home from Yellowbird because we recycle our boxes. I always leave them out in the van so they get either hot or cold and I don't have to worry about bringing any unwanted visitors into the greenhouse. Box quarantine. Yeah, box quarantine. Yeah. The roots on these are looking so good. Let's see what they look like in the channel. Dad got his new shelf that he made in here. It's pretty slick. The boxes fit on there really good. Okay, Katie's gonna resume that later once it cools back down. Look, there's red tomatoes over there. There's a few of them. I better harvest this last broccoli over here. These never ended up putting out side shoots like the ones in the garden do sometimes. So I'm gonna pull one of these plants out and we'll check out and see what the roots look like. I'm gonna pull out the emitters first. Wait, we can let the growing medium dry out too. beta buckets. We've done them in grow bags, but it was pretty fun just growing it for us. I don't know how profitable profitable it would be for a farm market, but at least we know we can do it. Wow, there's a lot of roots in here. All these roots out of here the growing medium really isn't that bad at all it's pretty clean there's hardly any algae we'll definitely be able to reuse that well the roma tomatoes are kind of outgrowing their cups but it's supposed to snow. So we're not ready to get them in the grow bags over to the high tunnel yet because it's not really fun trying to cover up everything and keep it warm. So hopefully it'll warm up because it's already getting close to the end of April. The nurseries are a little bit more interesting to look at. Usually we just have one pad of Oasis cubes full of the same variety. But now that we're starting to seed up for the farm market, we have a lot of different things going. Here's the other nursery. This one's not as far along. We got the flowers out of the nursery yesterday. So now I'm gonna clean it out. Um, there's a little bit of algae and residue left. And we don't want this mixing back into the main system. So I'm going to try to soak up as much as I can and then we'll get it all wiped out.
cleaning it out with that same diluted bleach solution that we use to clean the NFT channels. Much better. So in the past, we've had to hand feed all of the nutrient solution to everything out in the high tunnel and it took a long time, but now dad is working on an automated irrigation and fertilizer system. What I want to do is make up a strong nutrient solution that we can inject in line with the water source and also have it monitored so we know what the pH and the EC is of our vine crops. We, we're going to do that in the main greenhouse with the tomatoes and the cucumber lines. And then we're also going to use this system to also inject nutrients solution into the watering of the high tunnel, which will be strawberries, the tomatoes, peppers, hops, everything in the high tunnel. It should save us a ton of time. Right now, Katie mixes all the nutrient vine crop solution in the 100 gallon horse stock tanks that we have in the greenhouse. What we want to do is we want to get rid of this whole system. It's cumbersome, it uses electricity, and it's hard to mix up the uh, nutrients every day for this. We go through about 100 gallons for all these tomatoes a day. This is a dosatron. It works only by water power, water pressure. There's no electricity. So as the water goes through, it, there's a cylinder in, and, a, and a pump inside that actually just pumps in and it sucks in the nutrient through the tube. And what we'll do is we'll make a concentrated um, nutrient solution in barrels. And so when those water powered dosatrons come up, they'll suck up the nutrient solution, inject it into the water stream, and then it'll go out to the plants. And that way, as it runs, it will um, automatically inject the right amount and we'll be able to monitor it with the Blue Lab system, which is the secret to the whole thing. Blue Lab has a monitoring system called the Guardian. This system will monitor the EC and the pH within the line system. These are inline systems, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pipe system that these will all thread into. And that will monitor our system and we'll be able to really dial in the EC and the pH and make sure it's exactly right. We can also monitor these systems through the internet. So if we're away or if we just want to check it at night, we'll be able to do that. I think the greenhouse will come in um, just under $1,000 and I think the high tunnel will be just a little bit above that. But I think it's going to be money well spent. We'll film it. Yep. Film putting it in, install, and then you can see how it works. Yeah, so it's going to go really good, I think. So before we head home, I want to go out to the woods and dig up something to try with the lettuce wraps. These are called ramps, and they have a strong kind of oniony flavor, but you can harvest them this time of year, and they're really good. Just wanted a few. Well, it's been a little while since we've cooked anything, but I want to try out this Tokyo Bacana. So I cut up a bunch of stuff for some lettuce wraps. I got these all washed up and I think I'm just gonna cut them up like green onions. Okay. I'm gonna start these first. I got a little oil heated up over on the stove. I might have to try making a wrap out of this mirror lettuce too, out of the desktop system. I had to end up spinning it around because everything was growing that way towards the window. The bok choy isn't quite as big yet. This crop is almost done, so I started some butterhead lettuce, and I'm gonna do four in rock wool and four, oops, in oasis cubes. And um, I wanna see which growing medium does better. 
because I have the light coming for this from Crap King. So I'm gonna move this downstairs and then we're gonna do a true experiment. So I probably won't be showing this for a while and I'll have to do a reveal and I'll let you know which growing medium did better for me. Oh, this stuff is stinking up the whole house. Bobby is not gonna be happy. This stuff is really good. It's like a sweet soy glaze type sauce. I think it'll taste good in here. Okay, Tokyo Bacana and Muir. See which one is better. Okay, Tokyo Bacana's holding it in there pretty good. It's not cracking. Fold up the mirror. I think I like the shape of the mirror a little bit better. Except it's, okay, it's cracking though. The Tokyo Bacana definitely wins for being a better wrap. This mirror just broke apart. Still tastes good though. And the Tokyo Bacana had a little bit stronger cabbagey taste, but it was nice. My light came in. So this is the light that Crop King has to go with the desktop system. And mom thinks it's gonna make a big difference with the lettuce. So I want to test it out. Wow. This is nice. I love how thin this is. I'll let you know how it goes. Well, those were good. I'd definitely make that again, even with the ramps. So um, the weather though has not been cooperating. So there's not much to see out in the garden or anything. Um, it just needs to warm up. So I hope you guys like this video. Um, I'll be seeing you again soon, and thanks for watching. How'd you get all muddy? Were you digging in the garden, huh? Were you girls digging in the garden?